Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Dictors 101. Interdictors are a Tech 2 destroyer that are very useful for tackling entire fleets at once. Unlike tackle frigates and Hector cruisers, well, unlike most tackle in the game that requires a single target to lock down at one time, Interdictors can launch interdiction probe spheres, which will encompass a certain radius around your ship and any ship that is stuck inside that bubble is unable to warp away. That goes all the way up to capitals and super capitals, which makes Dictors the most effective ship to tackle anything in a fleet environment. There are three main components to any good interdictor fit, and they are a 5MN micro warp drive, so you can move around the grid quickly, an interdiction probe launcher, which is absolutely critical in order to launch these bubbles, without it you're not really a dictor, the whole point of the hole, and also a prototype cloaking device. This is very useful because it allows you to sit invisible in a certain position and wait for enemy fleets to show up, and then you surprise them with the bubble and warp away or jump gate. Very useful. Now the interdiction probe launcher can fit three interdiction probes at once, and when you click the module, it'll launch the probe into space at the exact location of your ship at the center. So if you're holding still, the bubble will appear around you. And if you're moving, the bubble appears where you were when you clicked the module. Probes do not move, but they can be moved. They can be boosted by Tech 2 Command Destroyers, Micro Jump Drive Field Generators. They can also be destroyed by smart bomb damage or by regular stealth bomber launched bomb damage. But they are untargetable, so they are normally unkillable by other subcaps. Unless they have smart bombs. Dictor bubbles last for two minutes for each probe sphere. And they take effect instantaneously. So if someone is 15 and a half kilometers away from you, for example, and you're burning towards them, and you click the bubble launcher, and they're trying to warp away, but the bubble goes up one second before they're at full align, then they are trapped. And that affects everybody within the 20 kilometer radius of your ship at the same time. It's most noticeable during tie day, where you'll click the button, and the animation will take a bit of a delay but the effect is instantaneous once the module actually cycles. Now, because bubbles do not move, the primary way for people who are stuck in bubbles to get out of them is just to fly away from them. Enemy fleets will always be burning, try to be burning away from your bubble that you launch, so you have to follow them and launch multiple bubbles to keep them trapped. Also, because you are bubbling your own ship when you launch an interdictor bubble, it's important that you're always running your micro warp drive so you can get yourself out of your own bubble. Because you don't want to be trapped there because you're vulnerable to being alpha up the field by the enemy fleet. If someone clicks warp to a location that's in line with your bubble before you place it, then they will seemingly warp through the bubble if they're far away when they start to warp. So for example, if you're sitting on a Stargate at one end of the system and somebody from another Stargate warps to your Stargate, if you wait until you see them on grid landing from warp and launch the bubble, it will not stop them. They will land at zero and seemingly slide through the bubble. However, if you place the bubble in advance before the other ship initiates warp to your destination, then they will land on the edge of the bubble. Any ship trying to warp to a target that is in line with a warp disruption bubble that was placed before they entered warp will be dragged out of warp and at the edge of the bubble. The primary key to flying interdictory successfully is staying alive and getting warp ins at zero on enemy fleets and following FC instructions. Because the bubble originates on your ship's location, it's important to be aware of where your ship is relative to everyone else on the grid. It's a frequent mistake of new interdictor pilots when the FC calls for bubbles, that they'll just hit the button while they're still anchored on the FC, the friendly FC. That is very bad. That bubbles the friendly fleet in a 20 kilometer radius around your ship and no enemies at all. And that's very bad because then 
potentially the whole thing will die because we can't warp away and we have to burn out of the bubble. You have to be within 20 kilometers of the enemy fleet and hopefully at least more than 20 kilometers away from any friendly fleets. Often you'll hear the FC call for stop or drag bubbles on gates. This is done by burning 50 or 100 kilometers in a direction in line with other gates or other celestials, and then placing a bubble away from the gate. That way, if anybody tries to warp from the other stargate to your stargate, they'll hit the bubble that's in a direct line with it, and they'll land 100 kilometers or 50 kilometers away. This will delay them, forcing them to either burn across the full distance or warp off and back to a tactical bookmark before coming through the stargate. This will buy valuable time for friendly fleets to move out of the area. This is called waterboarding, where dictors place stop bubbles 50 kilometers in front of every stargate as they warp along a certain path. So that all the fleets that are following them hit the bubbles 50 kilometers in front of the gate and they have to burn towards the gate or warp off and back from tacticals. It slows them down a lot. Because you can only fit three probes in your launcher at once, it's important to manage when you launch them and how many, and how you manage your reloads. The reload time is 60 seconds, so it's a significant amount. You are rarely going to be able to comfortably reload in the middle of a fight. If you are one of many dictors, and you see other dictors put up bubbles at a spot the FC called for, it's still a good idea to stay there to be the secondary and tertiary dictors if necessary, but additional bubbles in the same exact place serve no bonus. There's no benefit to stacking bubbles. They have a two minute lifetime, so be aware of that. If there's more than one bubble, you don't need to put any more up. What you may need to do instead is to put them in a different location. If the enemy fleet jumps in and starts moving away from you at speed, then you follow them and you put up more bubbles in their new position. The cloaking device on most fits is incredibly useful for reloading because if you're close to enemy fleet and you pop a bubble, if you're quick and they're not paying attention and they don't target you, you can cloak up next to them. As long as you initiate your reload cycle before you cloak, then you have the full, they have the safety of being cloaked while your reload time ticks down. And you've got another full set of three probes in your launcher when you uncloak and start bubbling them again. If you're dropping bubbles on a fleet within range of the friendly logistics, always broadcast for shields when you land, when you're getting mass yellow boxed, and overheat your shield hardeners. Usually the all logistics will have you on their watch list. The FC will say at the start of the fleet, you know, snowflakes S up, links, recon, dictors, because you are very important. We want to keep help logic keep you alive if possible. It's also a good idea to overheat your micro warp drive whenever you're using it around enemy fleets. Sabers are not, well, interdictors in general are not particularly fast, they're destroyers, not frigates. So overheating your micro warp drive gives you a really big chunk to speed bonus, and that can make all the difference whether you escape or get trapped. Some dictor fits have a full rack of guns. The standard fleet fits are focused more on tank and survivability. Small gang dictors tend to have combat, offensive combat abilities, aside from the dictors' bubbles. They will have scrams and auto cannons. Or... It can be useful, but in most fleet situations, it's the bubbles and keeping you alive that's a lot more important for major operation fleets. When you're traveling, stay with the fleet more or less at zero so you can easily bubble nearby locations like stargates. Once the fleet fight gets underway heavily and the grid becomes very busy, it's a good idea for you to burn away to warp to a nearby tactical or a friendly frigate at a ping, and then cloak up and just wait. If both fleets are fully engaged, then there's no point in you bubbling them because they're not going to try to warp away. And they'll just kill you because the enemy fleet will always try to primary dictors. You are the primary threat to catching them and killing them if they don't want to be there. 
So you wait at a tactical several hundred kilometers away and you make bookmarks. You look for wrecks, you look for corpses, and you right-click on them when you overview and you save them as temporary locations. And that gives you warping points. When you see the enemy fleet start to warp away, or when the FC calls for tackle to commit and dictators to go in, that's when you decloak, take the closest wreck you can find, warp to it at zero, and then start burning towards the enemy fleet. You can bubble before you reach them exactly, because remember it's a 20 kilometer radius. So any ship you see on your overview with a 20 kilometer distance or less will get caught in your bubble, at least the initial couple seconds. Is it ever effective to use a bubble in a tactical retreat? Absolutely. That's a very common use for them. When a friendly fleet is trying to extract, the FC will tell you, well, maybe he won't tell you exactly, but the procedure is that the dictators will warp to the outgate at 100, then using the mechanic of if you warp before the bubble goes up, you pass through it, the friendly fleet will initiate warp, and then the FC will immediately call for dictators to stop, to stop bubble the gate. Dictors will then put up their bubbles 100 kilometers in front of the gate in line to wherever the fight was happening. But because the friendly fleet is already in warp to it, they will pass through the bubble and land at zero on the gate. But any hostile fleets who are following the friendly fleet, who initiate warp a couple seconds later, after the dictor bubble has gone up, will get caught in the bubble 100k off the gate. Does that make sense? Yes. When you are bubbling capitals, it is important that you do not place the bubble too close to them because they will almost always have smart bombs fit to try and clear bubbles. Most smart bombs have a radius of about five kilometers from the capital ship. And the, that, that radius has to coincide with the center of your interdictor probe sphere, probe launcher thingy. So if you place the bubble 10 kilometers away from a capital ship, the radius will encompass it with 20 kilometers, but the center actual charge itself will be sitting 10 kilometers away from the capital ship outside of smart bomb range. It's always a good idea to have your tactical overlay on when you're flying a dictor because seeing where the enemy is is great for getting to them, but if you want to get ahead of them, you have to see where they're going. And the little blue arrows on your tactical overlay will show you coming out of the enemy ships on the brackets in space, what direction they're moving and the relative speed. So you anticipate. You put up one bubble as close to them as you can, and then you watch where they're going and you try to follow them and put up more bubbles in the path they're trying to take out of your current first bubble. All right, that's really all there is to it. There's not much as far as what, how they work, but there's a whole lot of how to use them. Everybody, let's go ahead and undock. If you do not have a dictor, let me know. I'll give you a fit and fleet chat. For those of you who've never done it before, you can rearrange the module icons on the bottom of your HUD. You can left click and drag around the slots to rearrange them to hotkeys or positions that are more convenient for you. I like to put the cloaking device over at the far top right corner, F8. I always put my prop mod in F1 if I'm not flying a DPS ship. And I like to space out the probe launcher over to F3 because I don't want to click it by accident if I'm trying to use my micro warp drive. Uh, I have some problems with my game, so I'm not going with you guys. Sorry. All right, sorry to hear that. Maybe next time when you get the test server figured out, I am recording this, so there'll be a video for you to watch later. Okay, thank you. Thanks for coming by. Okay, fleet broadcast aligned to XTech M2LR. Warp yourselves at zero. I've typed some Z's on my Dictor character and fleet, Rather Winterson. Please right click on his name in the fleet chat and add me to your watch list. 
I'll be simulating the FC. Okay, to screen jump into X Tech M. And hold your clock on the other side. So let's assume that there's a hostile fleet following us from FD Tech MLJ. A common command you might hear from the FC is Dictor is burned to zero, bubble to escape. So what that means is approach FT Tech MLJ, turn on your micro warp drive to get close to it quickly. You only need to cycle it once. If you keep it running too much, you'll bounce off the gate. So you can red cycle your MWD once you start moving. Now once you're close to the gate at more or less zero, go ahead and launch one interdiction sphere probe. And look at all these beautiful bubbles. Now they're all stacked on top of each other nicely, and that means, remember, there's no benefit to stacking bubbles. So now the gate is bubbled. Now I've got a couple choices from what to do from here. If the enemy fleet jumps into us, but then immediately crashes the gate and they reapproach and burn back into FT Tech MLJ. Where are you going, Jasper? I didn't say move. Because you see, one of our choices, because Interdiction Sphere Probe Launchers do not give you an aggression timer, if you're sitting at zero on a gate, it's actually a pretty safe place to be. Because what you can do is immediately jump back through the gate. So let's assume the enemy fleet has jumped back through to FT Tech MLJ. We're going to follow them. So fleet dictors jump back into FT Tech MLJ. Reapproach gate other side, bubble at zero. Use your prop mod one cycle. Approach, micro warp drive, micro warp drive off, wait until you're next to the gate at zero, and then launch one more one more bubble. Alright, so because there is a two minute duration to these bubbles, the other side is still nicely bubbled. So now we've all got one probe charge left and a couple options. You can crash back and forth between gates pretty easily, pretty safely. You can overheat your micro warp drive if the enemy fleet is sitting there, and you'll get back most of the time. Or you can also overheat your adaptive vulnerability field for more tank when you're doing that. Sometimes there's just no way to get past. If they have a lot of tackle with webs and fast lockers, then they're going to lock you up and slow you down before you get back to the gate, and they'll pop you because you are pretty squishy, you're just a destroyer. So let's assume the enemy fleet has jumped back into x -Tech m We're going to follow them, so Dictors jump back into x -Tech m Your job is to hound at the heels of the enemy fleet as closely as you can without losing your ship. Hold your cloaks. So the bubbles have gone down. So one more time, Dictors approach gate, bubble at zero. Prop mods one cycle to get over quickly. Now the reason you have to wait until you get to the stargate at zero is so that your bubble will properly encompass the entire sphere of where other ships can appear from. If an enemy fleet jumped through this gate, every single one of their ships would be inside a bubble right now. So to illustrate that, Dictors jump back into FT Tech MLJ, hold your cloak. Also, your reload cycle should have started if you have extra charges in your cargo, so you can see the timer ticking down the long 60 seconds. Maybe it's 60 seconds. These bubbles seem to be going down rather quickly. Maybe time's just going by super fast for me. No, it's two minutes. Maximum flight time. 120 seconds. Okay, fleet orbit gated current. If you jump through, that should be about 13 kilometers. Right click on the Stargate orbit current. 
All right, I'll do it as an example. And you guys who are opening at 13 kilometers will see that the bubble reaches out to past where you are. When I put it here at zero on the gate, because you're still at the same distance you were when you jumped through the stargate, so you are very much inside a bubble. Now, as an example, if I put up a bubble 12 kilometers from the gate, if I bubble immediately after jumping through a stargate, you can see over here, I'm only bubbling about half the possible region of space that enemy players could appear in. That's why you always want to put a bubble at zero so you can properly encompass the entire stargate when enemies jump through, wherever they could appear from. Okay, fleet anchor up on Rather Winterson. Keep it range one kilometer, prop mods on. We'll just move away from the gate a little bit. And you can see dictors are, they have some speed, but they're not super fast like scepters or tack one tackle frigates. Okay, we're now off the gate a little bit. Break anchor, move yourselves a little bit away from each other, starburst a little bit, don't warp off yet. And then cloak yourselves up. Activate your prototype cloaking devices. This will make you invisible to any other players. Nobody knows you there, unless they get within 2,000 meters of your ship. So if you're within 15 kilometers of a stargate, there's a good chance you'll get decloaked by random ships crashing back and forth through the gate. But once you're over around 70 off, as long as you're not in line with anything else, you should be pretty safe. That burn is kind of sideways relative to other celestial objects or stargates. So now you're safely cloaked, and you can wait for the opportune moment to strike. So let's say an enemy fleet is next to us. We'll just assume it's an enemy fleet close by. I will roleplay as the enemy fleet, so you should see me reappear on your brackets in space. Dictors in five seconds break cloak and burn in and bubble the enemy fleet, which is being roleplayed by Rather Winterson. In three, two, one, Dictors break cloak, bubble the fleet, dive in for tackle, Dictors commit, bubble the fleet. Overheat your prop mods in this situation, and you want to burn those 30 kilometers as fast as you possibly can. You can start bubbling when you see the distance marker tick down to 20 kilometers. I'm going to turn on my prop mod and start moving. You guys should have bubbled by now. There we go, that is the first one. I'm going to keep moving. You have to follow me. More bubbles, guys. More bubbles. You got to keep bubbling. Assume there's a hundred man fleet strung up behind me. Good. Keep going. More bubbles. More bubbles. If you reach the end of one bubble, you should put up another one. Good. Good. So, is there an easy way to decloak other than clicking the decloak button? Nope. Okay. Okay, good. Do any of you still have any bubbles left in your launchers? Any charges? Jasper, because he's bad. So, Jasper, approach me. I'm going to now roleplay realistically an enemy fleet trying to escape, and I'm going to burn sideways. I'm going to change my align. You can see I'm burning out of the bubbles towards the sun. So, Jasper, keep approaching me. Bubble my path towards the sun. Yep, good job. Anyone else who had bubbles left? I'll slow down a bit so you can catch up. You 
you guys have your tactical overlays on, can you see the blue velocity arrow that shows my direction of travel? Keep bubbling, Jasper. If you're outside of a bubble, it's a good time to put up another bubble. Yep, that's good. Now I've slowed down, but you can see I'm still traveling in the same direction. So what you would do is you would keep going my corp drive on in the same direction and put up another bubble in front of me. Yes, if I didn't burn out my micro warp drive, I would. Whoops, that is something to manage. You gotta be careful with your heat. Good, that's a good bubble. Okay, everybody now reload your launchers, even if you have probes left. So right click on your probe launcher if you have one left, click reload all. Now start the, start the 60 second timer. Now you're all in bubbles with the enemy fleet on reload. That's not a good place to be. Dictor starburst out of bubbles, prop mods on. Now if possible, you want to cloak up. So one of you just did over there, very good. If you're not being targeted, it's okay to cloak relatively close to the enemy fleet. And then you can decloak and bubble them again once the reload is complete. But if you are being targeted, you would have to warp away to a tactical on grid or to a random celestial in space. So once again, I'm going to roleplay as an enemy ship. So Dictor's warp to Rathor when it's in at zero. I've got an enemy ship on grid. Dictor, just break your cloak. If you're in a bubble, get out of it. Warp to me at zero. And come and bubble me. It's important as a Dictor to be aware of the time delay in where the enemy friendly fleets are relative to you. Because as tackle, you want to be ahead of the friendly fleet, but not too far ahead. For example, if you were the only friendlies in the system, and this was an asteroid built that was a certain number of AU off a of Stargate, sometimes it's worth committing to an enemy fleet, even if you know you're going to die if the FC is calling for it. But most of the time, you want to stay alive. So if I'm one ship, you would burn towards me, drop a bubble, and then a cloak if you could, or warp off to tactical or another celestial nearby. So that's, I am bubbled, but I'm still moving. You need to put up more bubbles towards where I'm going. And one of you just cloaked, but then immediately got decloaked by other friendlies passing through. Got to be aware of where other ships are going to be if you're flying a straight line. Okay, that's a good bubble. So now you need to starburst away from the bubbles and either cloak up inside them or warp off to other celestials. Because stacking bubbles are no benefit. All right, that was a good bubble in line with where I was headed. So I'm stay stay bubbled for longer. If you didn't already do it, make sure you hit reload before you cloak up. If you don't think you're likely to be immediately decloaked, then it's a good time to stay cloaked for a minute and let the module fill itself up again. So you have the full three to start again when you decloak. Okay, fleet decloak, no more bubbles, no more bubbles. Everybody reload bubbles. Burn yourselves out of bubbles and align to X Tech Bravo. Strike that align to X Tech M. Align only, do not warp yourselves, align only. So now we'll practice doing a stop bubble. If this was the grid where the fight took place, and the enemy fleets and friendly fleets are both engaged on it, then the FC says any dictors can put stop bubbles in the XTAC M gate 100 kilometers in line. That means warp from where the enemy fleets are to XTAC M at 100. So dictors warp to XTAC M at 100 kilometers.
Now it's important that you listen and time your bubbles with the FC, because if you put it up too early, you're going to catch the friendly fleet as well. So the FC will initiate the friendly fleet warp to the gate, and then he'll say, Dictors, stop bubbles, go. So Dictors, put up your stop bubbles. All right, now immediately scatter prop mods on until you're out of the bubbles and cloak up. Actually, no, don't cloak up. In this situation, you have two choices when you're doing stop bubbles. If you have a tactical already on grid, then you want to warp to that immediately and then back down to the Stargate because you're going to be trying to follow the friendly fleet out of system. Or you can just burn towards the gate. It's only 100 kilometers. If you have enough of a head start, you'll beat the enemy fleet landing in the bubble. And by the time the enemy fleet lands, you'll already be close enough to the gate and you can escape. So fleet burn towards X.M gate. Victors crash through, hold your cloak on the other side. We would then repeat this procedure on the next Stargate. You'd warp to the outgate at 100 kilometers. Wait for the FC to tell you to bubble, or for the FC to initiate fleet warp. Then you put up your bubble, and then crash the gate and follow the friendly fleet out. Questions on that? Is that what they call waterboarding or not? Yes, that is called waterboarding. Because you're slowing down the enemy fleet by putting multiple stop bubbles across systems along the single route. Anything anybody else wants to try or have me explain or do more practice of? Can we try to build like a wall of bubbles? Like I saw that yes. once we were ban bashing at Ansiblex and they were sitting on the keep star and people kind of built a wall uh, all in front of us. Yes, that's a good point to make. Let's do that. So you can see there's an Astro Hoose on grid here in X Tech M. Broadcast a line to it just in case you can't see it. So the reason we sometimes would do a wall of bubbles is because if a fleet, if there are multiple fleets kind of spread out on a grid, bubbles only have a 20 kilometer radius. And they only stop things that are warping in a direct line past them. So if I move just a little bit off this gate, you know, sideways, and Daniel put up one bubble, please. So I only use my prop mod one cycle, and you can see I'm already outside the bubble radius from the gate. So to cover a fleet that's spread out over multiple kilometers, or multiple fleets in different positions, if they're moving around, because you don't want to sit still as a fleet ever, so the predictors would put up kind of a wall between the fleet and the target, which is usually a keep star or a forzar. So I'm going to go drop a cargo container over here a few kilometers. as your reference point. Everybody see the container? Yep. Yes. So I want you guys to build a wall of bubbles both directly in line and also around the nearby line between the Astrohus and this cargo container but more towards the Astrohus from the Stargate, about 50 kilometers from the gate. So cover the gate line as well as the cargo container line. Yep, that's the goal. You gotta get the bubbles between both the gate and the cargo container from the Astrohus. So you gotta look in space to see where they line up. And if there's one bubble already there, then move somewhere there isn't a bubble and put one up. Good job, Jasper. You've got the cargo container now. I 
Not bad Silden. Maybe a little more towards the Astro House. Yep, good job Daniel going up. And there you go, Arzon. Great fill in right there. Yep. All right, that's a decent little wall. And one of you just cloaked up. Good job. Did you hit reload before you cloaked? It's set to automatic reload, so I noticed it started spinning and hit cloak. Yep, if you get all three out, then it automatically reloads, yep. So, another question. Math is hard. How far do you have to be from the probe for them to basically just barely overlap without it being too much overlap? You know what I mean? Like if you were to just burn straight up from where you launched. And you have for a them 20 to kilometer just... radius. So you probably don't have probes on your overview. They clutter it up really quickly. But if you turn on your tactical overview, your tactical overlay, you just control plus D as in dog hotkey. Yep, I see them all on the overlay, yeah. Now again, that won't really help with Dictor Bubbles because they're not really objects that show up on the line with the overlay. So you have to just look in space. So you have to look at where your ship is, how far away you are from the icon on the center of the bubble, and the edge of the bubble. And if you do it a lot, you can also kind of guesstimate it based on time travel with the micro dive running. We count out so many seconds and pop another one. Okay, bubbles are going down. Please reestablish the bubble wall. In what circumstance would we use surgical warp disrupt bubbles? In incredibly specialized, I honestly don't know because they're smaller than normal bubbles. There might be some super specific use for those, but in any fleet fight or any kind of reasonable fight, you want the biggest bubble you have. So never use precision predictors unless they're absolutely specifically called for. There are no bubbles between the gate. Gate line and Astro House. If I'm an enemy fleet, I could warp directly to the gate. Make sure you bubble that as well. You have to move over sideways. There you go, nicely bubbled. So now if I initiate a warp to the Stargate, I'm gonna hit the edge of those bubbles closest to me. And I land right here at the front. So you're any taking other? questions? Yes, any questions? All right, so how do I keep Shattered from blowing up at me in the middle of the fleet. What are all the mistakes that seem to happen that every time we go on a fleet with Dictors, he pops? Biggest mistake is bubbling the friendly fleet. So if you don't have enough brackets turned on, you can't see the icons in space of where your allies are. And you, even if the enemy is close to you, if friendlies are also close to you, sometimes you're dealing more damage than good by putting up a bubble because you're trapping the friendlies there as well. And that's severely restricting the FC's options for what to do with his fleet. Okay, so first I wouldn't launch a bubble till he said drop a bubble. But then you're saying make sure you get your distance right. Yes, that is the key now, between good pilots and bad pilots, is they're aware of the distance and the spherical 20 kilometer radius around their ship at the moment. Now it just might be this overview. But I know normally, like if I were to put on a hover over my scram or my point, it highlights what ships are in range. Does that same thing happen if you hover over your 
probe launcher? Because I'm not getting it to do any of it in this. No. I don't know how I have it set up, so. No, there is no pop-up radius for your probe launcher. Unlike, for example, stealth bombers, if you hover over the bomb launcher, it'll show you a nice red sphere in space for where the bomb will go off, but you don't get that for the Dictor. It's just 20 kilometer radius around your ship's current location. So first, make sure you don't bubble friendly fleets. And then also make sure you're bubbling only when the FC tells you to. If you're tackling one ship and somebody pops a bubble to get the pod, which is going to be empty, and now you bubbled the entire friendly fleet, that's a problem. If you bubble a ship for one pod that's empty, you yourself are bubbled, and now you can't be somewhere else immediately. That can also be a problem on fleet fights, because dictors have to move around quickly sometimes. Also, when the FC says to bubble the gate, he means bubble at zero. Not from the 12 kilometers where you spawn on the other side, because then you only get half the gate. So you need to be aware of where exactly the FC is referring to, which Stargate in which system. Any other questions? All right, this concludes my Dictors 101 class. Thank you all for coming out. Thanks, FC.